Yeah, you know, there were 40 reported tornadoes from this outbreak and confirmed so far there have been 30 confirmed tornadoes and you can see them all the way from our area in northwest Indiana clear down into parts of Mississippi. We had those large tornadoes in Illinois and the largest tornado, which likely was on the ground for maybe the longest time ever for a tornado was this quad state tornado, which developed in Arkansas, crossed over into Missouri at the bootleg here and then into Tennessee and Kentucky, possibly as long as 250 miles. So so far, we have confirmed it's been on the ground for 128 miles through Kentucky. Now, this compares to the tri-state tornado, which happened back in March of 1925. That tornado believed to be on the ground for 219 miles. This particular tornado, which started in Missouri, went through Illinois into Indiana, killed 695 people. It was an F5 tornado, worst tornado ever in the U.S. And joining me now to talk more about the historical perspective of this and also how climate change plays in, plays a role into the tornadoes that we've seen. Victor Gensini joins us. He's a meteorology professor at Northern Illinois University. And Victor, you've done a lot of research on tornadoes and severe weather. Give me your take on what happened Friday night. Well, hey, Larry, it's great to be with you. I have one word, historic. Uh, this particular tornado, as you just mentioned, will likely go down with the longest path length in history. We're still waiting on the National Weather Service surveys in terms to understand the total path length, but also whether or not this will be rated EF4 or EF5. I'm sort of leaning in the EF5 direction right now, given a lot of the pictures I'm seeing, but uh, we will we'll have to get to, of course, final word on that. Um, I, I honestly, just like many uh, meteorologists and, and yourself are really trying to unpack this from a meteorological perspective as uh, many of the ingredients that were there to produce this event looked a lot more like late spring rather than the middle of December. And you know, you can't really say this was directly because of climate change, but is there any connection to climate change and what we saw? Great question. This is, I, I can this to Major League Baseball during the steroid era. It was so difficult, right, to, to tell, was that home run due to steroids just like it's tough to say whether or not this tornado was augmented or changed due to climate change. However, when you look at the seasons, right, uh, that we know of during the steroid era in baseball, it's easy to say the total number of home runs, the, the batting averages were altered uh, by steroids. And, and that's really where we're at now. We're trying to unpack this and understand the attribution science related to these, these extreme events. And I know you've done some research with your team out there on how the tornado areas have kind of changed a little bit. And I don't like the, the, word, the uh, phrase tornado alley because it's kind of misleading because tornadoes can happen anywhere, but you've really noticed a trend in the location and frequency of tornadoes. You're right. I don't like to use Tornado Alley either. I think it leads people to believe that tornadoes happen in a very specific part of the country, right? You think of the Great Plains, you think of uh, perhaps Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz of these central plain states. We know these tornadoes can happen around here, including Chicago, right? And the, the map that you're showing right now is from our research group showing that there have been an increase in the number of tornado days in places in the Mid-South and Midwest and really a decrease in some areas in Texas and Oklahoma. And of course, this is cause for concern because we have a lot more people living east of the Mississippi River Valley and really uh, it increases our vulnerability and exposure to these damaging events. And one quick point as we wrap up, there has been uh, no direct correlation to the number of tornadoes or the strength of the tornadoes in relationship to climate change. We don't know that yet, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. We don't know anything about the intensity or frequency. We're just really focused right now on this geographic shift. And also it appears that tornadoes are happening in bunches more. So on any given tornado day, we're more likely to have more tornadoes. And I think that's kind of exactly what we saw on Friday evening. Victor, great stuff. Good talking with you and thank you so much and great work out there at NIU. Thanks, Larry. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.